Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we are going to examine the contemporary causes of diffusion and some of its effects. We begin with a little review about the concept of globalization. Globalization is the expansion of economic, political, and cultural processes to the point that they become global in scale and impact. To go back to the beginning of our culture unit, we discuss the difference between local culture and popular culture. Tonight, we're going to be mainly focusing on popular culture because local culture traits do not typically diffuse to the point of becoming global in scale and impact. So where are the hurts of popular culture? We notice on this map that dark green are the hurts of ancient culture, as they label it. But we're going to look at the modern hurts of culture, which are in orange. The modern hurts of culture are highly developed, very urban areas, Eastern North America, Western North America, Western Europe, and Japan. And even if popular cultural traits don't originate in these specific locations, they are heavily influenced by them. Modern communication technology has encouraged and facilitated the globalization of popular culture. And we cannot talk about globalization and diffusion of popular culture without talking about the internet. Social media and the internet help to facilitate the diffusion of culture. Platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok allow for cultural traits to diffuse almost instantly across very large distances. Remember space-time compression? And there are even different methods of diffusion on the internet. If you share a meme on Instagram with your friends, that would be an example of contagious diffusion. But if a celebrity or influencer posts the same meme to their followers, that's more of hierarchical diffusion. And on the internet, the English language is dominant. Remember that we mentioned that English is becoming a global lingua franca, and the internet is a major contributor to that, especially in recent years. While English speakers only represent 27% of internet users, English language content represents more than half of all content on the internet. But that trend will likely change in the future. Over the last roughly two decades, the number of Chinese speakers on the internet has increased by more than 2,000%. And that doesn't include the many rural Chinese who do not yet have access to the internet. And Arabic and Russian language users, while a smaller percentage, are rapidly increasing as well. So the language of the internet may shift considerably in the future. But as of right now, English still dominates the diffusion of popular culture on the internet. Shifting gears a little bit, let's talk about two trends that have emerged during recent years as cultures continue to diffuse around the world. Increasing numbers of cultural groups are coming into contact due to space-time compression. So how is that affecting cultural traits and patterns? One trend we are witnessing is that as cultures come into more contact, cultures are converging, meaning that they are becoming more alike. Increasingly, people are wearing the same clothes, like blue jeans, eating the same foods like McDonald's, accessing the same technology like Apple iPhones, and speaking the same language like English. Whether those people are in Beijing or New York, the diffusion of popular culture aided by space-time compression are allowing different groups of people to share very similar culture traits process known as cultural convergence. But globalization is not an all-powerful force. 
Communities respond in different ways, reject outright some of what globalization brings while transforming and absorbing other aspects into local culture. That is known as cultural divergence. This is the concept that cultures remain distinct despite increased contact. One prominent example of this is the modification of the McDonald's menu. While it is increasingly likely to see the golden arches in an urban area throughout the world, the menu items can vary based on local cultural practices and preferences. And there are other examples of cultural divergence as well. Some members of traditional cultures resent the greater gender equality that is often portrayed in Hollywood movies. Workers in the United States resist the transfer of their jobs to overseas locations, something that often happens in a globalized economy. Speakers of endangered languages may struggle and fight to preserve their language in the face of the spread of lingua francas like English, Spanish, French, or Arabic. So let's examine the effects of cultural convergence and divergence. As cultures converge, we are witnessing the loss of many local culture traits, particularly indigenous languages. This loss of language has galvanized many indigenous groups to hold strong to cultural divergence as English and other languages continue to diffuse. But there are approximately 7,000 languages that are spoken today, and 90% of them are spoken by fewer than 100,000 people, and nearly half of all languages are in danger. For some context, about every two weeks, a language disappears forever. And most of the languages that are on the verge of extinction are languages of indigenous peoples, particularly in the Americas and Pacific regions, which highlights their isolation from the rest of the world and the pressure to adopt culture traits of the majority population. But technology can help to preserve and even revive endangered languages. Social media platforms, texting, video chats, and YouTube also help to connect speakers and promote the use of native speech, especially among younger people. But many indigenous languages are endangered because they aren't as well connected as the dominant languages that are replacing them. And that's where we'll leave you tonight. Have a good evening, everyone. I'll see you all back in class.